A dictionary is a collection class that instead of using numbers as uh, indexes, it uses names. And because the, the indexes are uh, named, they are called keys. To create a dictionary, all you have to do is issue a dictionary new message. Now, it actually works very similar to, uh, to an array and to other collections. So, but the only difference here is instead of using numbers, in this case we use symbols. So we do has name and put the value James in it. Has surname and we put in a, uh, the, the value uh, bond. All these are string values, but of course you can use any value you want. Even references to other objects, as we have done with other collections as well. In this case, I'm using a cascade. I'm sending multiple messages to the same object, which is called a receiver of this message. If we do this, and we inspect this, we'll see that it has created, instead of numbers that we have in, as we have in other times, we have these names. In this case, the has in front of the name means it's a symbol. Address, city, London country, United Kingdom name, James and surname, both. So it is a much easier way to group data uh, uh, in a way that is meaningful for us. It, it, if, it, if, we, if we stand, we have put numbers inside here, we wouldn't know what kind of data we will store inside an index. But now, because we have named our indexes that we call keys, so we have these keys here that tells us immediately, you know, this is where the address goes, this is where a city goes, this is where the country, the name of the country goes, and this is the name, where the name goes in the surname. Uh, when we inspect this, we have seen also this kind of strange syntax here. Well, what is this? It is, this is a symbol, and this is uh, a message sent to the symbol past the string uh, as, as an argument. So what it does here is create an association, and it creates a multiple of associations that creates the dictionary. So we can do instead, we can create a dynamic array, and we can pass these messages here, the message. This one, which is, uh, this is a minus and uh, uh, larger than, and we can create a dictionary the same way we have created in here, but using a slightly different syntax. If we do this and we get here, we say we see that this, as we very similar to have done, but we have different values in this case inside uh, its uh, dictionary. Of course, you can use, you can keep putting as many uh, keys as you want uh, and use any kind of uh, name for these uh, indexes. Uh, it's completely up to you. Uh, if we want to find the keys of uh, a dictionary, we send the key, the keys message. So it actually going to return the name of the keys, which is the name of these indexes. Now we send the values, it's going to do, it's going to return just the values without the indexes. If we want to check to see if the dictionary includes a specific uh, name as a key, we print this. And an exam here, if it includes the city, of course it does, and it returns true. If we want to find where a value is located, we know that we have a value, but we don't really know in which kind of key it belongs. We can print this, and it's going to return us back the name of the key. And of course, we have the association we have talked earlier on. We can print this as well, and it's going to return back the associations that we use to create the dictionary. We can put things, as we have explained earlier on, with using output message. Now we inspect this, we'll see, inspect it, we'll see that it has an age uh, 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 key and we can remove the key using the remove key method, uh, do it, and we see the age key has been removed. Now of course there are other uh, methods that we can use as well. If you go here and go extended search and go browse it, we will see the dictionary class. And we'll see that it has a lot more methods uh, as well inside. We have, for example, collect, 
we have selected uh, later on. We have actually seen from the other associations, uh, for, excuse me, for the order collections, and we have select. Now, one important method is also values do, which actually what it does, it takes each value uh, and, and executes a specific block for it. So it takes a value, it passes it as a parameter to the block, and we can use this value to do something to that value. Uh, and it's very good. this is actually the process that this process called iteration, uh, which help us you know to uh, processing on the values, or we can do the same thing also on keys. So we have keys do again it passes a, bo uh, a block. Uh, the block receives uh, the name of the key as uh, uh, as an argument, and we can do we can execute a code on uh, on those keys as well. Uh, but iteration is something that we're actually going to discuss in a later tutorial because there are a lot of cool things we can do with iterations and uh, different problems we can solve with it. So, in this case, we have created two clients. I mean, the clients contain the name, the surname, the address, the city, and the country of origin of the client. And we have created two clients, client one and client two. We can add those clients to the order collection. And so now the order collection, if we execute this and we use a dynamic array, to uh, create, uh, to pass uh, the dictionaries as arguments, do it, and we go here to the clients, we will see, in inspect it, that now we have the client 1, which is uh, James Bond, and client 2, which is Hercules Almighty as well. So this is a nice way, if we want to, from one hand, to have uh, named indexes, but from the other hand, we want us to have number indexes, uh, sometimes it's better to have a named index, sometimes it's better to have a number index, and this is the case. For example, the clients, you have client 1, client 2, client 100, client 1000, but each client has its own indexes to specify the kind of data you store inside them. Uh, of course, you can use also dictionaries, because dictionaries can take uh, names uh, for indexes as numbers and as, uh, and as uh, strings. But uh, it's, it's actually common practice to use symbols instead because they are unique. And we're going to discuss why symbols matter in the later tutorial. Now, all this is nice and cool, but it's not really great always to use code to uh, input information. Uh, if you can, if, uh, from our experience with, uh, uh, with FAR, we have seen that the graphical user interface is very important for it. So, can we just use the graph user interface to input this information? Actually, we can. Now, what I'm going to do in this example, this is a graph user interface example, I'm going to show you how to use a very basic graph user interface, not an ideal one, but you know, it, it gets the job done, uh, to input the data for, it, for uh, additional clients. What I'm doing here is creating a new dic dictionary which is called uh, GUI client. This is going to input the information of that client entered from the GraphQL user interface. And what I'm going to use the GraphQL interface is a class called the UM Manager. Now, UM Manager is a class that it makes it very easy to uh, create pop-up windows, confirmation windows, uh, and uh, this kind of stuff to uh, make your life easier if you want to create very basic widgets to enter information, display information, uh, and input information from the user. So what I'm going to do here is I'm returning the default UN manager that is used inside the, the image, and I'm storing it in a variable called a, a graph user interface. Now, I'm going to ask first uh, the user if he wants to add a new client. Uh, this is not really necessary because if we call this GUI code, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's implied that the, the, the user wants to, uh, uh, to input information, but I'm going to do this just for the regular. So, I have created a reply is yes, and I have sent a Julia confirm message you want to add this client. Now, this message is going to return me a true or false, in case that uh, the user creates, because it displays a yes and no uh, button. If you cl uh, click the yes button, it's going to return true. If you click the no button, it is going to return false. Now I'm going to take this, which is it actually is a boolean, as we have already explained, and we're going to send the message if true, and then send this block here. Now what this block is going to do is going to use the the UN manager 
uh, text entry message. What the text entry message is actually is open a small dialog. It displays small text on top of it as a title. And then it take it, it has an input box where you can put strings and values inside. So in this case, I'm going to uh, I'm setting the name of the client. So I'm expecting the user to input the name of the client. And I'm putting this string that's going to return from the message because whatever you input in the box is returned from the message uh, from the message as a value. So it's going to return me here the value that the user put inside in this input box, which is going to be the name of the client, and put it on the name uh, key of the GeoClient uh, dictionary. I'm going to repeat the same thing for surname of the client, for uh, address, city, and country of the client. The same thing, the same thing that I've done here. The only difference is I'm using uh, the text entry uh, message to create the, the, the input box. And then, of course, in the end, I'm going to input, I'm going to add the GeoClient, the dictionary, which has all this information, uh, names or same address, city, and country, to the clients who have done already the under collection we have created here. So let's execute this code. And do it. And you see immediately we have the first step. Reply is yes, you are confirmed. So what it does here is uh, send the UNI manager the confirm message. And this is the config dialog that it creates. And uh, it replaces here the text. And if I click yes, it's going to input, it's going to return the Boolean value, which is assigned in reply yes. Yes. Now, because it's yes and it's true, it starts to execute this. It is uh, execute the GR text entry message, name of the client. So I'm going to put uh, Mary. I'm going to press OK or Enter. Surname, let's call her Johnson. Address of the client, let's call her uh, Dierman. 45. City, let's call it uh, New York. And country, of course, USA. Now, if I go here in uh, in the clients and inspect it, we will see that we have a third dictionary in added to the uh, order collection, which of course is the address is uh, German 45, city, New York, country, USA, etc. etc. If we inspect this, if we, we can actually inspect uh, the values inside here, it's going to give us the, the the dictionary, as I already explained, city, country, name, and surname. So as you can see, we actually can be very flexible uh, on how we store data inside Faro, but also we can, it is not very difficult to input data from the graphical user interface. This is the first example we have created from the graphical user interface, and we can already see it's not really hard to uh, do, you know, graphical user interface inside Faro as well. So that's all for this tutorial about dictionary. See you on the next tutorial.